I was a little taken aback when the X-H2 was announced to have a 40 megapixel sensor. I was afraid that'd mean the X-T5 would have one too. Now, I don't need or want 40 megapixels. I mean, I thought the megapixel wars were over. And a concern that a lot of you shared was that 40 megapixels crammed into a crop sensor would degrade its low light performance. But does it? That's what I wanted to figure out with a purely anecdotal and unscientific analysis. But real quick, the differences in the X-Trans 4 sensor found in the X-T4 and the X-Trans 5 sensor found in the X-T5. They're both backside illuminated, which helps them capture light more efficiently. The X-Trans 4 holds 26.1 megapixels and the X-Trans 5 holds 40.2 megapixels. I don't think the differences end there though. I think it's safe to say that in the two and a half years that have passed between the X-Trans 4 and 5, that the overall tech has improved efficiency also. They're not just making the same tech, but making the pixels smaller. The X-T5 also has a new and improved processor over the X-T4, but let's see how they really compare. And duplicating conditions is important here, so we're gonna do it in a controlled environment, the good old still life of things found in the house method. First, we'll look at comparisons of unprocessed RAW files of each camera from ISO 800 to 12,800. We'll see each comparison at 100% zoom. And just remember that the X-T5 image will appear larger because of the larger resolution. Lens, focal length, focus distance, image quality setting, and exposure variables are all the same. And you will see some slight variations in color cast in some of the photos. And this is a phenomenon I've noticed between all generations of X-Trans sensors. It's mostly irrelevant to these tests, but I did just want to point that out in case you noticed it. So looking at the raw photos with all Lightroom noise reduction and sharpening sliders set to zero, at ISO 800, I can't see any noise differences at all, even at 100%. At ISO 1600, if I strain and search for it, I can see some ever so slight increases in noise in the X-T5. And that's really searching for it at 100% though, and it is negligible. The comparison at ISO 3200 is pretty much the same as ISO 1600. There are some slight increases in noise in the X-T5, but you have to search for it. Finally, at ISO 6400, we can see some increases in noise in the X-T5, but it's still something that you really need to look for, apparent more in the more monochromatic areas of the photo, both in the shadows and midtones. And then finally, at everyone's favorite ISO to be at, ISO 12800, we can now see some more apparent obvious increases in the X-T5 photo in the same areas. Zoomed out, the differences are noticeable if you're looking for them. Now comparing the JPEGs out of the camera, again, all Lightroom sliders are set to zero. The in-camera noise reduction algorithm actually does a really good job of smoothing out that noise while preserving the details. This is ISO 12800 with the high ISO noise reduction setting in the camera set to negative four, the minimal amount of noise reduction. Now I could go on for another hour showing you all sorts of different examples and come to the same conclusion. Yes, there is more noise in the X-T5 than the X-T4 at high ISOs, noticeable at 3200 and above, zoomed in to 100%, but does it really matter? Don't get so wrapped up in this analysis that you can't see the forest for the trees as the saying goes. If you create images that evoke emotion, no one will see or care about noise. Unless you're looking at the two images side by side at 100% and searching for differences in noise levels, no one will notice. Hell, I can barely see differences when I am searching for them unless it's at 6,400 or 12,800, which I'm rarely at anyways. How many other people besides you will be doing this kind of comparison? Exactly zero. 
If you don't need or want 40 megapixels, or you're always at ISO 12,800, maybe the X-T5 isn't for you. If it has features that can help you create photos, and you hardly ever go to 6400 or 12,800, maybe you should consider it. And if you do end up with an X-T5 and want a walkthrough of the settings and features, my X-T5 tutorial course, linked in the description, has you covered. Just go do photography. Make images people will remember. Spend less energy worrying about these kinds of comparisons and more energy on creativity. I'd love to hear if you agree or disagree. Let me know here, and I'll see you in the next video.